Hey everyone, I hope everybody is staying safe and being healthy and socially distancing during these coronavirus times. I'm here at my office, you can tell by my dress, it's obviously somewhat of a relaxed environment here. We, uh, although we're still working on cases, we're not actually uh, uh, seeing anyone here at the office. But uh, I wanted to address something, which is there seems to be this cultural or society trend that's going on where everyone is talking about Tiger King. And so many people texted me and called me about it, and I had to go watch it for myself, and I got caught up in it. And then I got into some uh, some conversations with some different people about what would happen if you did own a tiger or some exotic animal. What would your liability be? So I wanted to address that, but then also give you some, uh, because I don't think really many that many people are going to be buying a tiger or some other exotic animal. But how does it relate to if you're a dog owner? What would your liability be? as a dog owner. So uh, let's talk about the exotic animal first and with exotic animals, it's strict liability. Okay, Florida law already addresses that, it's strict liability. What does that mean? Normal negligence, you have to look at what does a reasonably prudent person do under like or similar circumstances? And then what's the duty of care that's owed? Was that duty of care breached? And then for the person that was injured, did they do anything in, in terms of compared to fault? Did they do anything to help cause or contribute to the injuries that they sustained? Strict liability, totally different. You don't even do any of that analysis. The only thing that you look at if you are the owner of a wild animal and their strict liability is, is it your animal? Did it bite, attack, cause damage to some other person or some other animal? And if so, then you are 100% reliable for any damages that your exotic wild animal caused. That's it. So obviously, if you own a tiger or some other crazy animal, and I shouldn't say crazy, but some other uh, non-domesticated animal that most people don't own, uh, the liability chances for that could be extremely high because I, I think that you're talking about the potential for death or some other serious injuries. Now, how does it relate to if you are a dog owner? If you're a dog owner, Florida law actually looks at dog bite or dog attack cases very similarly. And that the owner of a dog is strictly liable again for any damages that, that your dog causes. So if you own a dog, it bites someone, it attacks someone, or it bites or attacks some other dog or animal, you're going to be 100% liable for the damage that your dog causes regardless of what caused the dog to attack, how it occurred, maybe some fault on the other people. Uh, it's strictly liable. Now, as a dog owner, there's a, something else. There's another uh, theory of negligence under common law, where if there is uh, the dog owner was aware previous to the attack of some of the dangerous propensities or aggressiveness of the dog, maybe there's some additional damages you could get. But essentially, it's strict liability, which is the same for wild animals. So again, don't think everybody's buying a tiger, but at least maybe that gives you some practical advice for some of the pets, the dogs uh, that we do own. So. Anyway, just want to take my time out to talk about that with you guys. Again, I hope everybody is staying safe, socially distancing, and let's get through this thing together. We'll see you all soon.